This weekend is Super Bowl weekend. Many of you are gearing up for that. We are also moving swiftly into the closing chapter of winter. And before we know it, spring will be at our doorstep. A major downturn in the Arctic Oscillation going strongly negative over the next week. That is a direct indication of a slowdown in the hemispheric flow, often due to blocking. With a negative Arctic Oscillation, there is the potential for cold air outbreaks into the U.S. That's due to the high amplitude pattern that develops. But let's take a look at the weather and see if that's the case this time around. We do see ridge building across Alaska starting this weekend. And that does drive this northwesterly flow into West Canada. However, that ridge is not very persistent. It breaks off into a cutoff high. And that weakens that northwesterly flow in Canada. We also see ridge building across Iceland into Greenland. So we're going to have a flow of very warm, moist air into Greenland. So that could cause some above average temperatures there for next week. But here in the U.S., the flow remains progressive and zonal. So the flow will be dominated by weather systems from the Pacific. And that's the case as we go into the second half of February, a strongly Pacific weather pattern. Here is the surface map from earlier this afternoon. Polar front through the central Rockies, a wave located around Desert Rock, Nevada, cold front south into the southern deserts of California. Now, I probably put this front a little bit too far south. I think the actual location should be through Wyoming, somewhat like that, and a warm front through the Nebraska Panhandle. So let's go like that for the frontal position. So what we see here is some rather warm air across the four corners and the southern Rockies temperatures in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And as you go into West Texas, we pick up 80s, 85 at Midland earlier this afternoon, and a dry line extending from this warm front around Childress down into the Sanderson, Texas area. Here's how things look on the 500 millibar heights and vorticity zonal flow through much of the country. Some troughiness across Nevada into central California. And this is going to support this series of waves right there in Utah and Nevada. So just based off this, we know that the polar front is going to be roughly in this area here. What else do we see here? Not much of anything else. Some fast channeled flow through the Great Lakes area into the northeastern U.S. and another traffic descending through the Pacific into the Washington and Oregon coast. Not much to see on the integrated vapor transport map. We do have a low-level jet in place across Texas into the Ozarks. IVT is about 400 through that region and it will be strengthening overnight and veering taken on a route from roughly Dallas up to the St. Louis area. Then going into the remainder of the weekend, that fast flow begins shifting to the east, and we find it departs the area around Sunday as another burst of cold air comes down from the Great Plains. We go into early next week, that return flow trying to get established there in Texas finally gets going Monday night and gets carried eastward by that fast progressive flow. And another surge for Wednesday and Thursday. And this is very much a pattern like we would see during the springtime. This one here looks to be rather strong around Saturday or Sunday. Could be some severe weather. Of course, it all comes down to the instability, but it's something that we will have to watch. Looking at the northeastern U.S., a cold advection pattern. Highs were in the 20s and 30s this afternoon. A plume of 60s did reach into Virginia and Chesapeake Bay. Lake effect snows do continue in Lake Ontario. We have a lake effect snow warning. We'll show that to you on the warning map. That's going to be this blue area that covers Oswego and Oneida County for tonight and early tomorrow morning. 
6 to 10 inches of snow possible. And then we go into tomorrow night and early Sunday, we could have some snow problems through this entire area. Winter storm warnings already out from Albany to the outskirts of New York City, out to New Haven, 6 to 10 inches of snow possible tomorrow night. And this large winter weather advisory extending all through the Northeast Corridor down to Washington, D.C. And this red right here in Pennsylvania, that's going to be an ice storm warning. That runs from about Cambria County to Johnstown, Frostburg, Oakland, about a quarter of an inch of ice and one inch of snow expected there. In the southeastern U.S., partly to mostly cloudy skies, temperatures were in the 70s and 80s this afternoon. A stationary front near Interstate 20 kept highs in the 50s and 60s further north. We had dense fog advisories posted earlier today in the coastal regions near New Orleans, but those have expired. In Texas, some very warm conditions, 80s and some 90s. Laredo reached 92 degrees this afternoon, Del Rio 90, and San Angelo reached 90 also. There was a warm front in this mix located about right here. North of that, some much cooler temperatures, lots of 40s and 50s and 30s as you go into Kansas. In the northern plains, a long period of bitter cold continues in Montana and North Dakota. Highs today in the single digits. Around Omaha, we see partly cloudy skies, but they are under a winter weather advisory for tonight due to freezing drizzle, which will be developing towards dawn. Winter weather advisories posted from Montana into the Dakotas, Minnesota, and northern Wisconsin as a fast-moving clipper pushes eastward. That's going to be it right there. We'll check that out on the water vapor imagery. You can often see that a lot better with these winter weather systems. There it is, moving at a pretty good clip. And you can check it out right there on the 500 millibar heights and vorticity, that area of lift moving very quickly to the east. This is going to be about 6 in the morning. There's noon, and there's 6 p.m. already moving into the Great Lakes. And of course, as it continues moving east, that's when we'll see those impacts in the northeastern states. In the southwestern region, things are a little bit unsettled. Towards the end of the loop, we can see some indication of a Bear Clinic cloud shield right in here. That's going to be associated with that wave right there at Desert Rock. Remember that there is that cold front through here and a stationary front further to the northeast. It was a windy day in New Mexico. You can see some mountain waves right there around Raton. Very spectacular and probably a very photogenic sunset. A lot of times these mountain waves do produce some rather striking images around dusk. We had red flag warnings and high wind warnings all through this area. Strong southwest winds gusting to 45 miles an hour. And wind advisories were in effect throughout much of Nevada. Winds out of the west gusting to 55 miles an hour at Las Vegas and up to Elko and into the Salt Lake Desert. And then looking at California, the winter storm warnings have finally expired. Temperatures are rather cool. We do have 70s in the deserts, but further to the northwest. Freeze and frost warnings throughout the southern San Joaquin Valley for tonight. Temperatures down to 27 there. Freeze and frost warnings in the inland San Francisco Bay Area up into the wine producing counties napa and some sonoma counties temperatures will be down to about 30 tonight in the pacific northwest winter weather advisories continue from billings down into western wyoming winter weather advisories for the tetons and for jackson they're expecting five to ten inches of snow there through this evening this winter weather advisory south of Spokane, that's about to drop off, but we do have this advisory in the Cascades that runs overnight. And we have a cold weather advisory in southern Oregon. Temperatures will be dropping down to 15 around Klamath Falls down into the Siskiyous. 
And there's our satellite imagery, major disturbance working through Montana and Wyoming, and a secondary disturbance further to the west across Northern California and Southern Oregon. And then we head out into the Pacific, large high pressure area well off the California coast. And then we go up into Alaska itself, starting to pick up some strong southerly flow, temperatures coming up to near 40 in the Aleutians and driving this warm front. Further to the north, some unsettled weather. St. Lawrence Island under a blizzard warning until mid-afternoon today, three to five inches of snow and blowing snow expected there. And just east of there, Coast Guard C-130s looking for a missing plane in Norton Sound, which went down yesterday. That was Bering Air Flight 445, a Cessna 208 that went down with 10 people just southeast of Nome. Norton Sound is completely covered with sea ice at this time, so the entire search is being done by air. And I imagine that's going to be pretty tough with all that IFR condition, so that's really a rough area to be flying. A burst of cold air coming in through northern Alaska into the Yukon. Temperatures down to minus 10 to minus 20. It's a very compact burst of cold air, and you can see that bullseye right there in the thickness pattern. And that's superimposed on the rest of this polar air mass covering much of the high Arctic all the way down to central Canada. Very stormy out there in the Newfoundland, Labrador Sea area. Southeastern Newfoundland was under a wind warning this afternoon. Southeast winds gusting to 65 miles an hour. Stephenville under a snow squall watch for Saturday and Sunday. Two to four inches could fall there. And parts of Labrador under blowing snow advisories due to this strong northeasterly wind component. And let's take a look at that forecast for tonight. That's going to be dominated by that snowstorm moving into the Great Lakes area. As we go into midnight, the map does not really show freezing drizzle very well, but it is going to be developing right in this area and moving from Des Moines, Omaha, into northern Illinois by tomorrow morning. Then as we go through the day tomorrow, this whole mess moves into the northern Appalachians, into Pennsylvania and New York, and we see that ice storm coming together right there in the south central part of the state. Cold air comes south through the central U.S. Denver, instead of 60s for highs, they're looking at temperatures around 40 degrees. That cold surge will reach the panhandles. Down in Texas, this is probably going to be the hottest day so far this winter. Dallas expected to get up to 83 degrees, 84 at Houston, 87 at Austin, and 90s throughout much of southwestern Texas. North Dakota not getting a break. More cold air coming south. Single-digit highs continue. Then we go into Sunday. Cold air flows into the northeastern U.S. and into the central Mississippi River Valley. As we approach Sunday afternoon, this is going to be the Super Bowl in New Orleans. They're looking for about 75 degrees at kickoff. Could see a few light rain showers off the coast. Meanwhile, further up to the north, we're going to see this system start to develop in Montana as a new clipper comes together. And there it is. That's going to be early Monday, a reinforcement of that bitter cold air. Monday night is going to be extremely cold up there in the northern plains. We're looking for lows down to minus 20 in eastern Montana to North Dakota and over to northwest Minnesota. Meanwhile, down to the south, this major system coming together, plenty of cold air across Virginia and Maryland. So it looks like another winter storm for that area. Then we go into the remainder of the week. You can focus on your favorite area. Storm number three emerging from the Colorado Rockies. There it goes, bringing more snow to the eastern Great Lakes and the northeastern U.S. as we go into Thursday. A major Pacific weather system for late in the week, and that will track into Arizona, the Four Corners, and New Mexico towards next weekend. And another push of cold air on the way for the middle of February. So it looks to be quite active coming up here for the next 10 days. 
So I think we'll just kind of take it a day at a time and check back in on this on Monday. And Monday will be the supporter edition of the show. If you want to catch that, you want to head over to Patreon and get signed up. Otherwise, we will see you back here on Wednesday. Hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl if you're going to be watching that. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.